Welcome to the NBA Coast to Coast podcast brought to you by thelines.com. Coming to you from France, continuing Josh Lander, joined by my guy Nate Weitzer on the East Coast. And we are looking at a Friday night slate here to end this week of this NBA regular season, Nate. We have a pretty big slate here. We're going to be talking about uh, the Milwaukee Bucks taking on Minnesota on the road in this one. Six straight home games for the Bucks that they won all of them. So we're going to be looking at uh, some road stats for them, probably hearkening back to last year a bit to find some of those. But plenty to talk about in this one. Also have a couple, another game video and our player props video up for you today want to make sure to like and subscribe so you can continue to follow along with us each and every weekday of this regular season also head to the lines.com that's where we have our great written content up for you guys all season long and our odds finder tool where you can go ahead and make sure that you are shopping these lines to the best of your ability across u.s sports books this nba season nate let's go ahead and get into this slate for friday night and get into uh the uh the milwaukee and minnesota game right after Yeah, we're back to a huge slate after a pretty weak Thursday night uh, slate there from the NBA. And I took the opportunity to put up our first power rankings and MVP updates up on thelines.com. A little off day there, so check those out. Uh, Running through the lines here, though, tons of games. We got Miami minus three and a half at Indy, and we will break that game down for you in a separate video. The Knicks are plus two and a half at Philly. Cavs minus six at the Pistons. Uh, Huge discrepancy in terms of where they are in the power ratings. Uh, Brooklyn plus three at Washington. Going to wait and see how they play second game without Nash here. Bulls are plus seven at the Celtics. Interesting one there. The Clippers minus four and a half at the Spurs. Hornets are plus 11 at Memphis. Who should have Ja and Bain back there. Golden State on a back-to-back. They lost in Orlando last night. Plus four at the Pellies trying to get off the schneid on the road there. I kind of wanted to take the Raptors here. Plus three and a half. They're, they're getting a little steam after just pummeling their last two opponents. But they're at Dallas. Tough place to play. Exactly. And Luka is on a tear. Portland is plus 11 at Phoenix. Probably not going to get Dame back yet. The Jazz plus two at the Lakers, who don't look now have won two in a row. And the Bucks minus three and a half right now at Mini. The key injury news to watch with Gobert and Anthony Edwards, both questionable due to illness. Um, I mean, I kind of want both those guys to play, honestly, if I'm betting the Bucks, It's just one of those situations where you shake things up and Minnesota will probably be better right now because it's just an, it's a fit issue. It's what everyone was concerned about when you put Gobert next to towns, you make towns play power forward. He got absolutely roasted in his last game by Cam Johnson. Who's not exactly a blow by player. And now Giannis is coming to town. And if, I mean, you're going to put cat on Giannis on the perimeter. I mean, maybe he's a decent bet uh, down low. I mean, maybe you'll say, well, Giannis can't get to the rim with Rudy protecting it, right? Well, no, not correct. Uh, 32 and a half points per game on 54% shooting his last nine against Utah with Gobert down there. Uh, they won, Milwaukee won that last game in Utah. They had struggled against Utah, but that's a completely different story situation. This Wolves team right now does not know how to play around Gobert. They, they don't have great defensive personnel, which we talked about when they played the Suns. They haven't played a good schedule at all. And then sure enough, couldn't beat the Suns despite a really good, their, I mean, their best defensive perimeter performance of the season. I mean, holding Chris Paul, Devin Booker in check to a degree. But like I mentioned, Cam Johnson and, and Mikel Bridges picked up the slack because the Wolves don't have wings, right? I mean, they traded all their wings for Gobert. Um, they're just awful. Uh, they're either awful defensively when Gobert sits or they're awful offensively when they can't get their spacing when Gobert's out there. Um, hey, it, look, if, if Ant's out, then D'Lo gets all of Drew Holiday to himself. That's not a good recipe for the offense. No. E- even if Ant plays, I mean, he's not shooting well. He's apparently not in great shape um, coming into this season. The Wolves are shooting awful as a team, which was the, their – you know, secret sauce, if you will, last year. I mean, it was, it was the yeah. reason they they were able to score so much. And and now they face the number one defense in the league. They look, they're six and two to the under thus far. I think the under has to be in play here at 227. Uh the Bucks have also been going under very consistently. They're lacking offense without Middleton, Ingles, Connaughton. So that's their their path to victory. Uh and I expect Giannis to hold it down on both ends of the floor here. It is their first road game in in a long time, and they don't have to go very far, so rest should not be much of an issue. 
Yeah, the, a little border war of sorts here, um, but it, not really a rivalry, just more of, um, you know, the, the, the narrative between these two teams last bunch of times they've played is Giannis owns this team. Um, so, you know, the last four, I think, or no, just dating back to last season at this point, um, you know, Giannis versus them. Well, no, it is. It's the last two seasons. Apologies. Four, last four games, 36 points, 14 boards, six assists, right? And we're talking about 67% from the field for Giannis. Um, yeah, Rudy Gobert's there now. Um, but like, uh, yeah, like you said, last nine versus Utah, still 32 and a half points and 12 boards. So um, I'm not worried about that. You, you know, we talk about no Chris Middleton, also no Pat Connaughton and no Joe Ingles. Right. And that's a big deal for this team and, and normally would be. And it's definitely the reason that I continue to like unders with them. Um, but, you know, Drew stepped up. He's at 20 points a game, which is, you know, it's right around where you want him to be. If, if you're not going to have Chris Middleton in there, he can get away with 17 a game or so when, when Chris is, is in, on the floor. But he stepped up, uh, you know, his offensive enough Bobby Portis averaging a double double and Brooke Lopez you know ho-hum 15 points a game seven boards three blocks and he's shooting 35 percent from the field on like seven attempts so he's getting him a couple threes and knocking down you know keeping people honest as he stretches the offense and Giannis is just doing MVP type stuff that maybe we don't want to give him that uh you know we, we don't want to talk about that for him because of the fact that he had two in a row before Jokic but he's kind of back on the uh on track here for for what we're talking about with probably Tatum and, and Moran and then Luca right who's the only player average Averaging more points than him with a higher usage rate than him. He's averaging 33 and a half and on about 37% usage rate. Like I said, Luca's close to like 40. It's absolutely absurd what he's doing, but that's a separate, uh, you know, a conversation um, where maybe Luca finally is uh, in line for an MVP. But yeah, it, with Giannis in this game as well, the fact that he controls everything the way he does on the road, his numbers do get a bit better uh, from last season, especially this season. They've only had the one road game where they beat Philly to open up the season for them and then had six in a row at home, like we said, but if you go back to last season, 21 and nine against the spread when they're in a way favorite um, and Giannis steps up his game, like I said, you can bet on him a little bit more um, and his prop is at 33 and a half points. It, I'm not touching it because I don't bet props above 33 when it comes to point totals. That's absolutely absurd, um, but it's not out of the question by any means with the, with the usage rate at 28% um, and the way that they're spacing the floor for him specifically to allow him to continue to get in those lanes. I mean, if Minnesota is going to be, you know, yeah, they've upped their defense. They're the 10th best defensive rating in the league they still give up a ton of points because they play at such a fast pace right so the defensive rating might seem okay because compared to you know with the amount of possessions they get per game it's not that bad but they're still giving up a ton of points and most importantly they're the second worst transition defense team so the thought of Giannis barreling down the lane against them uh, against the second best you know worst transition defense in the league kind of spells uh, disaster for that team um, and like you said if, if Rudy's on the floor and Kat's on the floor 103 offensive rating man I, th that's not that's not good enough no matter what your defense no matter how much better they've gotten at defense you can't win gate play a playoff game right you're not going to be a playoff contender when you're when you're shooting so they got to figure that out because it's also crushing d -Lo. i mean ants or excuse me cat is shooting the worst field goal percentage of his career d -Lo is also shooting the worst field goal percentage and three-point percentage of his career um it's just all a trickle-down effect from the inside out um and so they're gonna have to get that figured out and i i don't feel that confident in it right now um and i certainly feel very confident in in it like you said i'd rather have both of them on the floor so we can, they can continue to muck things up uh, in terms of Ant and Gobert, keep them both in. Like it's not working, and I'd like to bet on Milwaukee. So I'm perfectly fine uh, with no stars out in case that does mix something up in a way to you know jar something for them uh, and get them back on track on offensively. If they're not going to have that, and they actually do have these stars, and I still feel confident in what I've seen up to this point being the case tonight. So yeah, be wary of the stars out bets up phenomenon yeah. that we've have seen plenty of times in the NBA, especially early in the season. Um, <clears throat> if you count somebody out because they have important players out, they tend to overperform. Milwaukee, their defense has just been so, so good. I mean, Brooke Lopez is an obvious reason for that, uh, uh, that improvement. I mean, he, one of the most underrated rim protectors, really almost, yeah. almost as good as Gobert in, in that sense. And they're allowing the fourth fewest pain points, fewest assists, Number one, uh, two-point shooting. So when you talk about Minnesota's struggles from beyond the arc, I mean, where are they yep. going to get their points here if if they can't get to the rim against Lopez and Giannis, who Giannis, by the way, 96 individual defensive rating. That's why he is slightly ahead of Luka, despite Luka's ridiculous offensive surge right now in the MVP voting. Uh, that is yeah. very interesting race to watch, though, but we digress. I mean, yeah, it's just... Milwaukee no longer just allowing certain guys to shoot threes, but maybe they do a little bit of that in this matchup, right? Because, I mean, other than Cat and Ant, who, if he's healthy, 
uh, I think you're fine with anybody on Minnesota taking a three, right? I mean, they no longer have yeah. Malik Beasley. That is a huge loss for this offense. Uh, Pat Bev not there either to try and space the floor. The guys they bring off the bench are athletic slashers. They're not, they're not knockdown shooters either. Um, so I, I would be really worried about Minnesota getting their points here, uh, basically. And I, I mean, Milwaukee allowing 102 points per game. If you want to take the under on the Minnesota team total, I think that makes a lot of sense. And in the, the under for the game also makes sense. Maybe you want to parlay that with the Bucks win. Yeah, I like it. I mean, it feels a little bit trappy um, with the three points, road, Milwaukee, blah, blah, blah. But the numbers still point to everything we're saying. And, and it also does come back to the three-point shooting and the lack of three-point defense from Minnesota. I mean, they're shooting uh, in the top you know, 5, 14 or so in terms of t- three-point attempts a game and the fifth worst three-point percentage, right? So they're, it, they do have a large percentage of their points off of two. Not great uh, when you talk about Milwaukee's defense being in, in, in the top five and that, that column there defensively. So yeah, I'll, I'll all of this, Giannis's numbers, yeah, the defense that Milwaukee has played up to this point, uh, and the matchup for Minnesota doesn't doesn't bode well. So even you know, even though the, the three points on the road feels a little trappy, um, I'm still happy to take that and not even need to touch it. I would parlay it, but I wouldn't even need to, to tease this game in any way, fashion to, to feel good about it. So that is all the time we have for you guys in this one. Definitely make sure to like and subscribe to that page. Continue to follow along with us each and every weekday of this regular season. And until we see you next, happy betting. <laughs>